Okay, so today we learned about specific heat and determining and calculating specific heat. And now we're going to take it one step further and talk about specific heat at what we call thermal equilibrium. And so what does it mean to be at thermal equilibrium? So sometimes when combining different substances together, like putting ice in your iced tea, the two substances start out at very different temperatures. However, over time, the two different substances that have been combined will reach a common final temperature. Um, and that is what is called thermal equilibrium. And that final common temperature is usually warmer for the initially cold object and colder for the initially warm object. So they kind of, one starts out, they both start out at different extremes, really cold and really hot. And then um, when they come together to that thermal equilibrium, they are warmer than the initially cold object, but colder than the initially warm object. And it's kind of somewhere not necessarily in the middle, because that's the thing, is that no, it won't necessarily be exactly in the middle. And we'll talk about why. And so um, what it means to be at thermal equilibrium just means that you're at the same temperature. And so what does that mean, or what does that have to do with specific heat? Sometimes the substances being combined are not going to be the same, like placing a hot stone in water to warm it up when camping. And therefore, they're going to have different specific heats. What that means is that it's going to take a different amount of energy to change their temperature. And so if you start out with different specific heats and you are either warming up or cold, cooling down, you're not going to have the same effect. Uh, your change in temperature is not going to be this, the effect. With the different specific heats, the change in temperature for the objects will not be the same, but the final temperature will be the same. So again, they have to reach thermal equilibrium when they're both at the same temperature, but the change in temperature for each of them is not necessarily going to be the same because of their different specific heats. The energy transferred between the two sides will be the same though. One side will lose energy and that same energy will be gained by the other. So because they've got different specific heats, they're going to have different changes in temperature, but their energy change should be the same, and that final temperature change should be the same. So what does that look like? So let's take a look. If I have 100 grams of aluminum and 100 grams of water, and I heat up the aluminum to 70 degrees Celsius and then put it in 30 degrees Celsius water, so their initial temperatures are different, after a while, the aluminum water will reach equilibrium temperature, and I want to know what the temperature is. And so what we have to do with this is we have to think about um, what's going on here. And we're still going to use the same specific heat calculation, Q equals MC delta T, but it's going to be a little bit different. And I'm going to have to copy this over to a new slide so that we can see things. So if the final temperature of both will be the same, we can set up the equation as follows. Q hot plus Q cold is equal to zero. And what that means is that the final temperature is, is the same, and we said that the energy change is the same as well. So there should be no net energy change. So when I take the energy from the hot side plus the energy from the cold side, I, it should equal zero. There should be no net overall energy change because energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transferred. And that's what we're doing here is we're transferring energy from one side to another. So if I take Q hot plus Q cold, I can flush that out into that Q equals MC delta T thing. And I can have M hot C hot times TF minus TI plus M cold C cold times TF minus TI is equal to zero. And then I can input all of my data. Now, if I go back to this, I can show you where my hot and my cold data is. So if I'm looking at my aluminum, my aluminum started out at 70 degrees Celsius, which is hotter than 30. So that's going to be my, my initial hot temperature. And then that aluminum also had an initial mass of 100 grams, okay? And then I have my cold side with my water. I have 100 grams of water, but it's initially at 30 degrees Celsius. And I'm going to need specific heats, but those are going to go together. So 100 is going to go with 30, and then 100 is also going to go with 70, okay? All right. So let's go on to this next part. So if I plug that in, I've got the 100 grams of aluminum times the specific heat of aluminum, 0.6 grams um, per degree Celsius, 
times the temperature final, which we don't know, minus the initial temperature, which was 70, plus 100 grams times the specific heat of water times the, again, we don't know the, the final temperature, but we do know the initial temperature is 30. And that's going to be equal to zero. If I multiply this in, I can multiply my mass times my specific heat. I get 90 joules per degree Celsius because the grams cancel out. Let's cancel those grams out. So the grams cancel out, and the grams are going to cancel out over here, and I get 480 joules per degree Celsius times my change in temperature. If I, oh, yep, okay. So if I go from there, I can actually factor this in. I can multiply it by TF, and then I can also multiply it by negative 70. I can do the same with my 418. Multiply it by TF, multiply it by 30, and I'm going to get 90 joules per degree Celsius times TF minus 6,300 joules because the degrees Celsius will cancel out with those degrees Celsius. And then the same thing happens over here. And so now I've got two different things that are added together, and I've got something that's joules per degree Celsius times TF on both sides and something that is just joules on both sides. So I can combine those two together through the very key factor of adding. So if I do that, I can get my negative, whoops, negative 18,840 joules and then my 508 joules per, per degree Celsius times TF. Now I want to get TF because I'm trying to solve for TF, so I want to get it by itself. So I can, I've got this negative number, so I can add it to the other side, and that'll get me, that'll get me TF times 508 joules per degree Celsius is equal to 18,840 joules. To get TF by itself, I can divide by 508 joules per gram degree Celsius, and I end up with TF is equal to 37.09 degrees Celsius. Okay? So you're doing some um, factoring, then you're doing some combinations, and then you're solving for TF, and you get 37.09 degrees Celsius. So that's by using the equation Q hot plus Q cold is equal to zero. And I highly recommend this equation. It's probably my preferred method because there's no issues with negatives and positives, and we'll, I'll get to that in the next method. Because there's another method, but some people don't like it. Some people don't like having, e, e, having equations equal zero. So the other method, I just need to clear that. The other method says that uh, if T final is going to be equal, is the same on both sides, then I can set negative Q hot equal to Q cold, okay? In which case, negative M hot C hot uh, delta T is equal to M cold C cold delta T. This one gets harder because a lot of people will forget that negative sign, and they'll forget to carry it through. But the same process applies. You'll plug everything in, and then you combine and factor everything, and you're going to end up, with the same answer, right? I'm going through the same process. I'm just not having to do any addition or subtraction at the, at the very end to get things on the other side. So I multiply 100 in, and then I factor in my 90, and my, my TF, I factor in that number in, and then I still do combine, but it, it's not my favorite. If you wanna do it, great, but it's not my favorite method. I don't like it as much. So doing, specific heat at thermal equilibrium adds another complication to it because now you're trying to solve for two TFs, but they aren't different, they're the same because you're at thermal equilibrium. So it's just kind of combining two things. The main problem is figuring out what data belongs with what side, hot or cold. And so we'll go through some examples tomorrow about that um, and we'll do some practice about this. It's not a new concept, it's not really a new equation, we're just using it twice and combining it together. So I will see you guys tomorrow where we'll have some practice on this. Thanks. Good night.